Well, today I have the pleasure of hosting Her Excellency Gracia Michelle. Thank you very much for making time to be with us, ma'am. It's a pleasure. Now, we're going to talk about the networks that you're now forming to empower women. Tell us more about the new voices, the new face and the new voices network that you have also patronaged here in Rwanda. New Faces, New Voices is actually the first network we established okay. and it's uh, the most developed. We are now in 16 countries. Why New Faces, New Voices? Mm. Maybe I should take you a bit to the... My generation has been in the landscape, the political landscape for decades. Mm. We just felt that part of our legacy should be to create platforms, spaces mm. where young generations who are much more educated than we are, they have much more expertise, they are professionals in different areas, but they are not visible. Many times you'll find just token of them, but they are in hundreds of thousands, mm. believe me. True. Actually, there are millions of them, mm. but we're still struggling to have the face and the voice of women mm -hmm. at the right time when they have to articulate mm -hmm. and to design what they feel they want about their life, life. the life of their communities, mm -hmm. the lives of their nations, the lives of our continent. So establishing these networks is one to harness mm -hmm. for them to work together yes, yes. and to build the strength of unity, mm -hmm. where they can strategize, they can define priorities, and they can strategically, mm -hmm. you know, take the positions, and in this case we are talking positions, high positions in financial sector. Yes. So that's the idea, is we acknowledge that the young, extremely competent young women, mm -hmm. they need our support yes. as the old generation mm -hmm. so that they will be much recognized, they will be much valued, and they will be positioned where they can influence shaping policy, mm -hmm. shaping the future of our nations and continent. So this is okay. one, okay. the new faces, new voices, which is in financial sector. Mm -hmm. I must say also, mm -hmm. we chose financial sector because it's one of those which usually women are not so present, present. and powerful in yes. leadership. Mm -hmm. So it is part of uh, also changing, shifting to those areas mm -hmm. where women are not very much uh, represented. represented. Mm -hmm. But before we dive into women you know, issues, I'd want to know, of course for, it to, for women to participate in the global world, they need to have the goodwill of the leadership. What's your take on the African leadership? The, the situation on the continent is mixed. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't put a blanket as if everything is not uh, working. Take your country, Rwanda, mm -hmm. is the best country in the world as far as promotion of women to leadership positions. I mean, beginning from primary schools, it's a very, very comprehensive policy mm -hmm. from the little ones to adults. So Rwanda, is an African country, so you have the best example <laughs> from Africa. But you have other countries, mm. particularly in Southern Africa, which I know better. Uh, South Africa is one good example. Mm. Namibia is a good example. Mm. Mozambique is a good example. Mm. But it, you have countries like Senegal as well. as well. So we should be careful not to say Africa, but we say we have good examples but there are some challenges with some of our countries who are not taking very much I mean, steps in implementing what actually heads of states have adopted as gender declaration. Mm -hmm. So the policy is there. The, politi the political will is needed now to implement it at all levels, mm -hmm. at a country level. Mm -hmm. And we do have countries which are lagging behind, definitely. Yes, but you know, an African, the African tradition normally is for a woman to be in the kitchen and not necessarily at the upfront. What do you think women should do now to actually stand up and arise and feel they can take part and sit on the same table as men? Let me say first that traditions change. Mm -hmm. 
and they must change in this aspect particularly. And it is changing. Um, if you look at, uh, for instance, in our universities, mm. in some cases you have more girls than boys. boys. They are coming. <laughs> so young women are coming. You look also at certain areas of business. Mm. Young women are affirming and asserting themselves. They are taking up opportunities. They have their starts up. They have their connections. And they are really, I mean, very vibrant as mm. entrepreneurs. So we are in a process of transition mm. where tradition is still weighing and pushing some of women back. Yeah. But there is already rising of new generations of young women mm -hmm. who are, uh, they are not uh, taking a no as, uh, as, as something that they are, they are going to live with. Mm -hmm. And the, some of the examples even here at World Economic Forum mm -hmm. who come and say, I started an enterprise, mm -hmm. I started my, my business, I'm doing this. And they are going global. Mm -hmm. It's not only That's that true. they are doing in African context, mm -hmm. they are going global. So we have to be proud of the successes which we are having, mm -hmm. acknowledging that the challenges are still are still there. huge, mm -hmm. but it, we need to have a balance in the way we analyze this. I know you have a passion for children as well. What would you take, especially now that we have some African countries that are still in conflict, that still you know oppress women as well? And uh, recently, there's a Somalian pre uh, runners up who wants to be a woman, who wants to be a president in Somalia, but she couldn't even go back to Somalia, you know, to actually run for her, for presidency. What's your take on that, especially when it comes to children? Actually, I think when it comes, well, let me talk of children first. Yes. Uh, any society, if it is to assess itself as a healthy mm -hmm. society, it has to look at how it treats its children. If you treat your children well, you are a healthy society. If you are not, you, you do not, then you should question what's wrong That's and true. how to correct mm. it. Many of our societies, even those who are not in conflict, are not treating children kindly. Mm. So my passion with this came from my responsibilities when mm. I was uh, in the Ministry of Education. I had to deal with children. Mm. I had to uh, contribute to create opportunities for children to thrive. And that's when I realized that we needed to advocate for children's mm. rights because they can't speak on, the, on their own behalf. So some of us, and particularly those who are in a position of making their voice heard, you have to speak on their behalf. You have to raise the issues, you have to influence policy, you have to change institutions, you have to make sure that you create the world children can be children. Mm -hmm. So it came from that, from that level and it has continued to be with me precisely because of what you said. There are still children in conflict mm -hmm. and they are being, just to remind you, you know, this is the first country, Rwanda is the first country I came here. Mm -hmm. Four months after the genocide, mm. everywhere it was still that mood mm. of how to cope mm. with the deep, deep impact of genocide. I visited this country mm. and because I wanted to be myself able to touch the reality. And if I were to talk of children affected by conflict, mm. this is the place I should have come. So it was the first country I visited. Ever since, mm. the eyes of children in this country, which never left me. Mm. They never left me. And why I'm saying this is for you to understand that if I keep on, it's because the young experiences which are so ingrained in mm. me that I can't rest while I know that in other places, Thank God Rwanda is not one of them anymore. Mm -hmm. But there are many other places where children are still really mm -hmm. under mm. the pressure of conflict. You have to continue to speak mm. on their behalf. That's the, that's the reason. But it's not only <coughs> to try to uh, uh, mitigate the impact. Mm. It's more importantly, more importantly is to say where we would like our children to be. Mm. So it's the, the, the far looking vision mm -hmm. of how we should be societies which treat the best we can yes. our children. Mm -hmm. So my involvement is also to engage 
governments, the civil society organizations, let's create that beautiful, beautiful place mm -hmm. where you and I, mm -hmm. I mean, you are a young woman. I don't know whether you have children or not, but it, what you would like your children to be, mm. what I would like and I have the honor and the privilege, my grandchildren to be, mm. I want that to be the place where every single child in this continent to be. Mm. And that's why I continue to use the little space where I can occupy the connections which I can have with those who make decisions mm. to remind them on a daily basis, our children deserve much better than what they are having mm. today. It all trickles down to leadership. Would you say a leader is born or a leader is made? No, I don't believe in this, in this idea of uh, born and leader. And let me uh, try to elaborate this. And the qualities too of a good leader. To be, to be a leader, it's not something you choose. Mm. It's something people you work with acknowledge in you and they say, this is our leader. Mm -hmm. You don't come and say, oh, I'm a leader of this. No, 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 no. I don't believe in those kind of things. So there has been a debate on mm -hmm. everybody is a leader. Mm -mm. There are people who, are, who have the tools mm -hmm. to become leaders. But it, let's be humble. Communities you work with, the people you are connected with, mm -hmm. If you are the kind of leader I believe in, then they will recognize that in you. Let me come to the president of this country. He is loved by his people. He is respected. And actually he's admired, not only in Rwanda, by other Africans and the world, because people recognize mm. what he is and what he does for his people. It's not him to say, I'm a leader. No. They say, this is a leader we want because they can count. They see the benefits of what he does for his people. That is a leader. And sometimes we, we define leadership and we confuse leadership with uh, being trained, with having certain skills. Mm -hmm. There are people who are highly skilled, but they're not leaders. Okay? Yeah. So me, I'm trying to encourage our young people just to be humble and say, prove yourself. And your community, the community you serve, will call you a leader. Don't call yourself a leader simply because you have gone through three or four training courses which tell you what leadership is. Okay? Yes. Just be humble. Through your walk of life, would you say you reached a point where you felt you want to give up through you know, your fight for women and children? And never, us? never, never. I never reached that point because I, I take my, my courses very passionately. Mm. And uh, as, I, as I refer to you, I don't, I don't make decisions of what I have to do blindly. Mm. I always have faces of people in front of me. And while I know and I see of those women who do not have the same privilege like me. Mm. When I know what I mentioned about children, how can I have the luxury of giving up? It is there are times where I feel tired. Mm. There are times where I'm frustrated, <laughs> particularly when I feel that I don't manage to get my message across. And I wonder, why people don't see what I'm seeing? Or in other terms, why they don't feel the outrage, which I do feel. Because it's not like they don't see it, mm. but they don't feel outraged. Sometimes they don't feel even the pressure and the urgency, mm. the imperative of doing something and use the privileged positions which they have. I feel frustrated, but I never to give up. Mm. No, no, no. I don't think I, I, I would be able to, to, to give up. I wouldn't put up with my own consciousness if I would have to give up. That's why, and now coming back to the networks, mm. my contribution to create this platform where these young women are taking really the center stage is actually a selfish thing, if I can say it, <laughs> is to give me the comfort of, uh, you know, I'll retreat, I can be much more quiet mm -hmm. because I know I have contributed at least to create to those, spaces, mm -hmm. the, those spaces for young generations. And I think it's a responsibility. It's, not a, it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. 
because we were also given opportunities. We didn't get where we are because we are clever than anyone else. No, we were given opportunities. Now it is our responsibility to open those opportunities and those spaces mm -hmm. in which young women will simply reveal themselves. They just reveal themselves and then they take, I mean, the torch mm -hmm. and they continue with it. They say Africa, the new Africa is now rising. There are lots of opportunities, but sadly, Africa still depends a lot on aid. What's your take on that? I think we have to change that. There's no reason we should cling to aid. Mm. No, there's no reason for that. I think if we were to use better our resources mm. and use them, transform them mm. for our own benefit, we wouldn't need because we have enough. We need also to be much more responsible mm. in the way we build partnerships. It is true that we need technology. Mm. It is true that we need expertise, which sometimes we do not have. Mm. But to bring that technology, bring that expertise to serve your agenda, mm. your purpose, and you define clearly the terms of exchange mm -hmm. and you make sure that the terms of exchange are mostly to benefit your own people mm -hmm. it's not the other way around so I think our problem is that when I say our mm -hmm. the problem of some Africans is because just in the contracts which they sign with some companies you say for goodness sake mm -hmm. How can someone not only sell our resources, mm -hmm. but also sell our soul with it? Did. And that's what has to change. There are countries which do not have, for instance, national resources, mm -hmm. certain national resources. Let me give you an example. I come from Mozambique. Mm -hmm. And they just discovered recently that we have all these huge deposits of gas. Yes. Mozambique should offer first gas to African countries. Mm -hmm. Those who can, I mean, whether it's pipelines, I don't know what, but it, it should be to benefit Africans first. There's no reason why the gas of Mozambique will go to Japan, will go to somewhere else, and it doesn't go. For mm -hmm. us, it doesn't come to Rwanda if it can. Mm -hmm. It's ours, Mozambique, it's Tanzania, because we just happen. It's not a special merit, <laughs> but it just happens that we are at the coast mm -hmm. and we have those resources. Our leaders have to sit seriously and say how African resources have to benefit first okay. Africans. And look at those who are in the hinterland in mm -hmm. this case. I'll use my own country. I, those who are like, uh, you know, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Malawi, they're not at the coast. But that's where first this gas should go to. For energy, what we are discussing in this World Economic Forum, it's clean energy. And governments, they can come together and develop this together mm. because it's for the benefit of African people. And I think that's where, so why do we need aid for this? If I use the gas, the, the gas issue, mm -hmm. you know, I just have to be able to say, this is what I have to offer. Yeah. I don't know, to the companies who have been developing. Mm -hmm. And you bring technology, you bring this. This is your part, what mm -hmm. you're going to take. But in this one, Mozambique, Tanzania, mm -hmm. if you like, but all our neighbors first. Mm -hmm. And then if there is something left, Yet, you can take it to other okay. parts of the world. Mm. This is the discussion which I think our leaders need to be. But how do, African, Helen, sorry. Yeah. How, how do African countries actually support one another? Right now, they feel like it's a competition with another country. They can support one another. That's a how can they support short one another? short-minded approach. Very short-minded approach. There's no reason to compete. You know what? This country, for instance, mm. Rwanda, has decided that it's going to be a technological hub. I don't need to compete. What I have to do is to bring Mozambicans and come, go and learn. Mm -hmm. Take the best which you can take from Rwanda to come and implement. And as I was saying, 
Mozambique can say, oh, technologically we learn from, uh, from Rwanda. Mm. But if Mozambique can offer gas to why do we need to compare, mm. to, to, to compete? We have different, you know, positions mm -hmm. and we, we, we have opted. So it should be more complementarity. Mm. What can I give? What can, can I get. take? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm saying it's short-minded approach. Because really we have so much to give to one another. Mm -hmm. But we also have so much to learn from one another. And I just hope, I just hope that our leaders, I'm a little bit encouraged because well, in Southern Africa and East Africa, we seem to have leaders who are beginning to see this. Mm -hmm. They are beginning to really integrate the economies. But we need to do more. There's much, much, okay. much more which we need to do in economic integration. And finally, I will not be doing justice if I don't ask for your words of wisdom for women and children out there, you know, who feel they don't have the opportunity yet, they don't feel they need to get out of their shell and actually face the world. What would be your word for them? I have to say that uh, opportunities are not to be given. Mm. You have to seek for opportunities. What governments can do is to create the space. But the opportunities, you, your sisters, your brothers, have to grasp them. Mm. So I think we need also to change the attitude mm -hmm. and we need to change also the discourse. Particularly young people, they continue to complain that, oh, we're not given opportunities. You are not going to be given opportunities. You have to look for them and you have to grasp them. What you can say is, is there legislation? That's then the legislation, it's a government mm -hmm. issue. Okay? There are institutions. Yes, they are. In, some, in many countries, actually, there are youth development agencies and etc., etc., etc. If they are not working well, mm -hmm. reshape them. Mm -hmm. Don't complain. You say, this agency is not working well and for it to work and to serve us as young people. We want A, B, C, D things mm. to change. But you're not going to do it also if you are not organized. I think that's one problem. Mm. In many countries, youth are not organized. So they try individually. You can't change things like that. You need to have a space in which you work together and then you approach institutions to change. Because if you are millions of you, and millions of young people are shouting separately, mm. they will make a lot of noise, but it will be very difficult for decision makers to hear what you are saying. Because you are, it's too many voices where you, it's very difficult to know what is the priority. Mm. So young people need to get organized. And in this, I must say, women are much better. Women are much more organized. Mm. And it's not like I'm saying there's no youth organizations. I'm saying in numbers, mm. they need much more. Young people need to much more organizations, much more strategizing in terms of their priorities by sector, by the way. Mm. Because if you are in tourism, it's not the same thing if you are in agriculture. Mm. If you are in mining, it's not the same if you are in telecommunications. So they need to be organized and to be able to define clearly what are the changes they would like institutions to make so that they will grasp better the opportunity they deserve. Thank you very much. Well, as you've had for yourselves, opportunity are not given. Seek them, find them, and be organized. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for making time to be with us today. By the way, I'm not Excellency. Can you can you correct <laughs> this? I'm Mama. Mama. Yeah, that's that's the, the quality <laughs> which I feel comfortable with. I'm a mother. This Excellency. Mm. No, I'm not. I'm Excellency of what? <laughs> By the way, huh? Do you see what I mean? Yes. Thank well, you. thank you very much, Gracia, yeah. Rochelle, for making exactly. time to eat this. Thank you.